All right, boys and girls, it's Mrs. B again. I'm here to read to you our first chapter book. So settle in, get comfortable, and let's read. Today's story is written by Jerry Spinelli. The name of the story is Fourth Grade Rats. Chapter One, Rats Don't. First grade babies, second grade cats, third grade angels, fourth grade rats. It was the first recess of the first day of school. A mob of third graders had me and Joey Peterson backed up against the monkey bars. They were giving us the old chant. When they came to the word rats, they screamed it in our faces. Then they ran off laughing. I wish I was still in the third grade, I said. Why, said Joey, so I could still be an angel. Not me, he climbed onto the first bar. I waited three years to be a rat. He climbed to the next bar, and now I am a rat. He climbed to the top bar. He shouted, shouted over the schoolyard, and proud of it, I started to climb. My sneaker slipped on a bar, and I went down instead of up. The first thing I landed on was my hand. My thumb got bent back, way back. Pain, I howled as loud as I could. It still hurt. I kicked the ground, the monkey bars, the nearest tree. My thumb still hurt, and so did my foot. Only one last, one le thing left to do. I cried. Joey's voice came down from the high monkey bar. Rats don't cry. The bell rang to end recess. I jogged, sniffling to the door. When I got there, Judy Billings was behind me. Like a miracle, the pain in my thumb disappeared. For me, there was no such thing as pain when Judy Billings was around. I loved her. I was sure that any day she would start to love me back. In the meantime, she mostly ignored me. But I kept trying. Judy was in the other fourth grade class, so I didn't see her too much, see too much of her. When I did, I figured I had to make the most of it. That's why I held the door open for her. She went through. As usual, she ignored me. I didn't care. For one second, she was inches away. Heaven was a trainload of those seconds. A little while later, during silent reading, a spider crawled onto Becky Hibble's book. Becky screamed and flipped her book into the air. The book landed on the floor. The spider landed in my lap. Next thing I know, I'm on my desktop, tap dancing and yelling, get him off me, get him off me. On the way to lunch, Joey's whisper came again. Rats don't get scared of spiders. We sat together in the lunchroom, just like last year, and we both brought our lunches from home, just like last year. We sat at our usual table. I opened my lunchbox. I was checking out my stuff when I heard Joey snickering. I looked up. He was wagging his head. His face was smirky. I looked around the lunchroom. What's so funny? What's funny? That, he said. He was pointing at my lunchbox. What's wrong with it, I said. Ain't that the same one you had last year? Yeah, so what? He snickered again. Look at it. I looked at it. So? What do you see? I see a lunchbox. What do you see, a Martian? He flipped the cover down. Look at it. What's on it? All over it. I looked again. Elephants. He broke out laughing. He pounded the table. His face was red. I had never known I could make him so happy. He tried to talk a couple of times. What? What? But he kept cracking up. Finally, he slapped his hand over his eyes and got it out. What are they doing? The elephants? Yeah, yeah. They're flying. This time I thought lunch would be over before he stopped laughing. Other kids were looking over. Gerald Willis, a sixth grader and the school bully, threw a french fry at Joey, but that didn't stop him. 
I unwrapped my sandwich I didn't have all day. At long last, he took a deep breath. He said, right, flying elephants, big flapping ears, doing yo-yos with their trunks. Some of them, I corrected. Other ones have fishing poles. His cheeks bulged with laugh balls, but he swallowed them. Morton, he made himself serious. Don't you get it? Get what? Flying elephants on your lunchbox, man? That's little kitty stuff. He picked up his paper bag. He wagged it in my face. This is what a rat brings his lunch in. I took a bite of my sandwich. What do I care? That's it, man. You ought to care. He opened his bag. If you don't care, who will? Your mom probably got you that box, right? Yeah, I guess. Right. Moms. They just want to keep you a baby all your life. Suds, I'm telling you, you got to put a stop to it now. If you leave it up to your mom, you'll be going off to college with a flying elephant lunchbox. I looked at my lunchbox. I'd had it since first grade when I was a baby and glad of it. Most of the other kids broke their lunchboxes or lost them, so they got new ones every year. My lunchbox just kept rolling on. The elephants were fading, and some were even starting to look like hippos. But I loved my lunchbox. It was like a brother to me. Now that I thought about it, I wasn't even sure I could eat lunch at school without it. As for my lunchbox going off to college with me someday, well, to tell you the truth, I don't see anything so bad about that. I looked at Joey. He was wagging his head and smirking in. Uh-oh, I thought. It's not just the lunchbox. Okay, I said. Now what? We're in chapter two, real meat. He pointed that. My sandwich? You gonna eat peanut butter and jelly all your life? Why not, I said. I like it. I took another bite. He sneered. Yeah, right. I can see it now. You're in this big fancy restaurant with all these fancy big shot business people. And everybody orders their dinners. And the waitress comes to you and you go, Duh, I'll have the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, please. Right, Morton. They're really going to be impressed. So what am I supposed to be eating? He laid his sandwich on the table. He opened it up. Bologna? Meat, Morton. Meat. I eat meat, I told him. Real meat, Morton. Ever eat a steak? I thought about it. I don't know. Maybe once. Ever eat a pork chop, a roast beef, a liver? I put my sandwich down. You're ruining my lunch. He looked proud. I ate a bite of liver last night. You're lying, swear to God. You didn't get sick? Nope. How'd it taste? I shuddered at the thought. He made a face. Terrible. Terrible? So why'd you eat it? You're stupider than I thought. Not as stupid as wanting to be an angel baby all my life. You want to grow up, you got to eat stuff you don't like. And I'll tell you something else. He leaned across the table, getting real serious. It's an idea of mine. The worse it tastes, the faster you grow up. Now it was my turn to laugh. Yeah, right, Peterson. All I got to do is find a dead skunk and eat it, and poof, I'll be 30 years old. He slapped his sandwich back together and took a chomp out of it. Forget it, man. You want to be a baby? Go, be a baby. He went on chomping. I didn't feel like having a fight. I said, okay. Maybe I'll ask my mom to make me a bologna sandwich one of these days. I don't care, he shrugged. Say, I said, where does bologna come from anyway? I was trying to picture herds of bolognese roaming around on ranches. I never got an answer. The bell rang. We packed up our lunches. We didn't even get to eat most of them. As we headed out, I wondered if anybody was looking at my lunchbox. At the door, we bumped into Mrs. Sims. She was my third grade teacher. I really liked her. She never exactly said so, but I think I was her favorite student. I hadn't seen her since school ended back in June. Suds Morton, she went. How's my big fourth grader? She held out her arms. One thing about Mrs. Sims, she gets physical. If she decides she wants to hug you, there's not much you can do about it. So I just walked into those arms and let them wrap around me. How are they treating you up there, she said. Well, the teacher's okay, I said. She backed off. She looked at me. 
You mean something's not okay? I felt squirmy. Well, it's not as much fun being a rat. At first, she didn't understand. Then she got a big smile. Now, Bump, don't be so glum. Before you know it, fourth grade will be over and you'll be... What's fifth grade? Monkeys, I told her. Of course, monkeys. You'll be a monkey. She hugged me again, she whispered. And don't forget, you'll always be an angel to me. She laughed and sent me on my way. In the hallway, I felt a hand on top of my head. Was Mrs. Sims following me? I turned. It was Gerard Willis, who was born a rat. His lips were puckered. They were making kissy noises at me. Ooh, little Sudsy, my little teacher's pet. Where's my apple? Didn't you bring me an apple today? Before I could do anything, he swiped at my lunchbox. The cover sprang open and everything fell to the floor. My half-eaten peanut butter and jelly sandwich, my pack of pretzels, my cupcake, and my apple. I scrambled after the stuff on my hands and knees. Kids' feet were everywhere. Somebody crunched my pretzels. As I reached for the apple, a big, dirty sneaker kicked it down the hallway. Above me, Gerald Willis was howling. I was the last one back to the room. I stashed my lunch back box and sat down. A note was waiting for me from Joey. It said, swings after school. I looked over at him and nodded. I nodded.